You might remember Oumuamua, the first ever interstellar asteroid detected in the solar system, discovered back in October of 2017 as it passed through the solar system extremely fast. And though we've discussed the subject many times previously, including the potential explanations for its unusual acceleration, there is another question that a lot of scientists have been thinking about, and even got to explore this in various studies, but that we never really talked about on the channel. The idea of panspermia, or basically the idea behind life coming to Earth possibly from somewhere else, basically through asteroids and through early bombardment. And it just so happens that a recent paper tackles just that. But one of the main reasons I wanted to discuss the study is really because of who kind of written it. Turns out this is one of those papers written as a high school project by a high school senior. And that by itself is already really cool. Although he did collaborate with two professors, and so it is a legit scientific paper. And the main question that the paper tries to address is, I guess, relatively simple. How likely is it that the life on Earth started as a result of panspermia and not the most prominent idea known as the RNA world hypothesis. Basically the idea that life must have started as early RNA molecules became more complex and eventually developed a way to kind of propagate themselves, becoming more and more complex in the process. With well, this of course looking something like this. Now obviously this by itself is not really proven either, this is just a hypothesis as well, but some of the individual steps in this evolution have been shown to be true. We've discussed some of them in some of the videos in the description. But panspermia has always been really fascinating. And not even just because to solve the mystery of life on planet Earth, but to even try to understand if life can physically spread across outer space, and if potentially other planets, habitable planets, could at some point be settled by various asteroids, even from planets like Earth. And so what's the chance that some of the asteroids that escape our planet eventually end up on some other habitable planet, starting similar life there as well, because the asteroids in this case were also carrying a lot of different bacteria such as extremophiles, able to survive inside inhospitable conditions for a very long time. But up until the discovery of Oumuamua and the second interstellar object known as Comet Borisov, all of this was more or less hypothetical. But because these two objects were detected approximately two years apart from one another, with the third object, known as Interstellar Meteor 1 or IM1, potentially crashing on Earth in 2014 as well, although this one was actually really small, either way, it's now become possible to start making educated guesses about basically the statistics behind all of this. How likely is it possible and is it actually happening right now? And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss this in more detail and let's talk about some of the main points in the paper. And let's start with the obvious. Just by looking at the surface of the Moon, it becomes pretty obvious that both the Moon and of course Earth received a lot of collisions over time. And naturally, a huge amount of materials have been delivered to both objects through these collisions. But the first question that's important to tackle here is, out of all of these collisions, how many were not from the solar system and were actually from somewhere entirely different? And so based on those two observations of Oumuamua and Borisov, we can now start making somewhat educated guesses. Based on some of the previous studies, researchers believe that at least 10,000 different objects, very similar in size to Oumuamua, might have been captured by the solar system even during the early formation. And so the solar system, even in the beginning, might have already contained certain interstellar objects, mixing and shuffling things around, even potentially introducing certain bacterial life into it. Now this is obviously a huge speculation, and we obviously have no idea if this is even possible, but for now, let's we'll just go with it. Then, when it comes to early Earth, we know that for many millions of years, it did experience a huge amount of bombardment, up to the point where the life started forming approximately 3.7 to maybe 3.5 billion years ago. And that means that for 800 million years, there was a really high chance for something from outside of the solar system to crash on the planet. And during this time, the solar system might have captured up to 100 billion different interstellar objects, with quite a few of them very likely crashing on Earth. And so during this period of heavy bombardment, at least a few of these asteroids very likely were interstellar in nature. Meaning that the chance for panspermia does not seem to be zero. But here we have to make another assumption. Only asteroids of certain size would provide enough protection for various microbes inside the asteroid to survive these super long trips. Mostly because some of the previous articles established that due to cosmic radiation, anything on the surface and anything not too deep from the surface is actually going to be completely destroyed. But any asteroid larger than approximately 10 meters in size does actually provide a very high chance for survival 
underneath the upper layer. And here the estimates even suggest that you could technically live inside the asteroid, I mean assuming there's something to eat and so on, for at least 7 billion years. That will be more than enough to travel the galaxy several times until you crash into something in one of the star systems. And so quite a few of these larger asteroids very likely entered the solar system and very likely crashed on Earth, and more importantly, are very likely also doing this right now in a lot of other star systems as well. And so by taking these properties into consideration, here the conclusion was that, well, okay, for Earth, the chance is still pretty low. The maximum chance that life on Earth started as a result of panspermia is something like 0.001%. And that's under the best circumstances. So basically the asteroid is perfectly preserved, it allows for life to survive the collision with planet Earth, and there is life in it to begin with. And so statistically speaking, that is not a very high chance. And more importantly, it still ignores a lot of other filters that would dramatically lower this chance by a huge margin. So for example, back then Earth was very different from Earth today, and so life from another planet might actually find itself in an extremely toxic environment unable to survive. Not to mention the fact that DNA and RNA molecules obviously also degrade over time, and so even if you have a lot of extremophiles hiding inside the asteroid, and they're for example in some kind of a preserved state, after millions and billions of years, the chance for them to survive all of this is still extremely small. But once again, like I mentioned before, it does not seem to be zero, which means that it's worth looking at this from a more of a galactic perspective as well. Because we know that our galaxy does contain a lot of Earth-like planets, with potentially billions of planets in habitable zones of various stars, with quite a few of them already found. And as a matter of fact, the closest exoplanet to us, Proxima Centauri b, is one of these planets. And so how likely is this to happen elsewhere, for example assuming that some of these asteroids might have come from planet Earth and are currently seeding planets out there. And here things change quite dramatically. Here the new analysis suggests that approximately 10,000 worlds out there could have been the result of panspermia on them. Or basically suggests that at least 10,000 planets out there might have received asteroids potentially containing life. Life that basically settled and found a way to survive. Now this is still obviously a really big assumption based on a lot of somewhat difficult to calculate statistics, but at least based on the analysis from Oumuamua, Borisov and the asteroid that crashed on Earth in 2014, and the observations from exoplanets out there from telescopes like Kepler, that's sort of the main conclusion from the paper around 10,000 habitable worlds that started with panspermia. But because a lot of these worlds are orbiting red dwarfs, this number could be even as high as 100,000. Although once again this is all based on extremely optimistic projections, with the assumption that everything goes fine, nothing goes wrong. But because we're still missing a lot of factors that we are just not aware of when it comes to panspermia, or surviving in outer space, or even the formation of life on other planets, for the most part this is still an extremely hypothetical proposition and a somewhat difficult to prove conclusion. Although it would be much easier to prove if one day we do find an asteroid somewhere out there in the solar system that either contains life from somewhere else or more likely contains dormant life from right here on planet Earth. Now that would be a huge discovery. And that would definitely kick off all of the studies on panspermia, presenting us with a very important factor for survival of life in outer space. And we actually might get some of these first answers from the now retrieved samples from the asteroid Bennu that we're going to be discussing in one of the future videos, which means that you should subscribe if you want to learn more. But until these future discoveries, or until someone else proposes something else really intriguing in regards to panspermia, check out some of the similar videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.